and welcome to It's Not Over with Dr. Dan Farrell. I am Jordan, and it is a pleasure to even knowing that we have viewers. Um, our uh, our Facebook page has grown to over 650 um, people who are viewing and liking our page and our videos. Wow. Good. Um, and a couple of the videos have reached over 900 views. Wow. And I mean, sorry, not just views, likes. So mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty encouraging. Amen. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. I like what you said a few moments ago that we've got to be careful about the doom and gloom. But, you know, you can't, you can't, you don't know where a solution is unless you know the problem. Let me say this. As the Titanic was going down, and I mean it was going down. I mean it was listing and listing and listing. Um, Did it break yeah, in it half? Broke, it broke. Towards... Correct. It broke right here. Not in the middle. It broke right here. Okay. And, um, but they were singing the song. It was a Londonderry tomb, also called Autumn, but it's called Nearer My God to Thee. And I do think that's kind of, I don't know, I think that's symbolic. That maybe as America is sinking, there will be a turning back to God. Hmm. I hope that's the case. Probably I do. not as a whole, but as his no. children. Right. Not just his children, but people getting saved. Mm -hmm. You see, I hope there is, because you see, when when everything's taken away from you, you know, all your materialism and all that, that's all you have is God. That's right. So, and by the way, I, I, I always wanted to document that. When I did my documentation and, and did the screenplay on the Titanic, we I did, was able to document that that song was played, and they even found sheet music, you know, that was, had sunk down and so on. So they, I, I believe it's, I think it's reasonable to think that they, if they weren't playing nothing shaking but the leaves on the trees. You know, they weren't, you know, playing, yes, sir, that's my baby, no, sir. I mean, isn't it funny that you want your rap music, you want your rock music and your hip-hop music when everything's going good. But when the ship is sinking, nearer my God to thee. It's amazing, you know? And so it looked like a huge motel all lit up on the dark waters. It was an ominous sight. And yet amidst all the confusion, there was one man, maybe there were others, but reported there was one man who was on his way to preach at the famous uh, Moody Church in Chicago. And this man was preaching and beseeching men and women mm -hmm. to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave his little girl, Nana, to a steward and put her in a boat and then went away, and Mrs. Leach, and helping others, shouting women, children, and the lost into the lifeboats. Mr. Harper was heard to say women, children, and the lost in the lifeboats. And he had been warned in Scotland, by the way, by other Christians not to go on the Titanic. Many of them said, we do not feel good about this, uh, Mr. Uh, Harper, do not go. But John knew why God had sent him. And he gave away his life jacket. By the way, John Harper couldn't swim. He was a guy, he almost drowned when he was a teenager. And he could not swim. And yet in those icy waters off Nova Scotia, he gave up his life jacket. And when the Titanic began to flounder, almost perpendicular with the sea, there were crashing boilers, pianos, china chairs. And of course, she slipped in and broke halfway and that's what you were just asking, uh, uh, closer to the stern as she descended. One uh, onlooker said it looked like a dark finger, because by the time she started really sinking, it looked like a dark finger sticking out of the ocean. Hmm. A thousand or so were on the wa in the water screaming, clinging to the debris in 28 degrees of water. Now, tw see, salt water can get that cold and not freeze. Mm-hmm. Obviously, fresh water gets, what, 32 degrees and it begins to freeze, not salt water. But again, I come back to John Harper, and Jordan played that character in that, that uh, drama. John Harper, with no fear for his life, swam what little he could swim on, on broken pieces of chairs and so on. Are you saved, man? Are you saved, man? Boat to boat, uh, or excuse me, uh, uh, chair to chair, chair and debris to debris, from wreckage to wreckage. Finally, he came to a man that was in the water and he said, man, are you saved? And the man said to John Harper, no, I'm not. And John Harper then quoted Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. He went to another person and witnessed to them in a frantic, panicky way. Are you saved, man? Are you saved? And he would quote John 16, 31. Finally, he came back to the man that had first said he was not saved and said, man, are you saved? Are you saved? And then John Harper 
screamed out, I'm going down. Now, this is what this man said. And then, just a few seconds later, he bobbed back up above the surface and said, no, I'm going up. And then he slipped under the water, never to be seen again. Now, the man who witnessed this was later one of the very few that was rescued on the ship Carpathia, which, of course, arrived a little bit late. But this man was gloriously saved and converted and resided in Hamilton, Ontario. I've been in Hamilton, Ontario. I believe the guy was a doctor. I can I talked to a few of the guys you know in Hamilton, Ontario, even St. Thomas and Ontario, and we cannot locate in fact I'm gonna say this because it's a personal quest of mine. If any of you listening by way of sermon audio or YouTube or Facebook, if you know have any leads on who this man may have been, the last convert of um of John Harper, please let me know. I uh, he in fact he's hailed and he gave a testimony. In Hamilton. Now, see, here's the thing. I don't know that he was from Hamilton, but he is known to give a testimony that he was John Harper's last convert. And what do you call those guys in museums, the curators? I've had curators from different, like the one down in Gatlinburg and so on, and we cannot find who this, what his name was. Now, I guarantee I've seen his name because I've, I've scanned and searched the entire roster but uh, of those who were saved, rescued, but I cannot at this moment, I cannot figure it out. How many were spared again? How many um, were saved? Uh, 1,500 and some. Wow. Um, let me see. No, 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 no. 1,522 perished. It was only 700 and some that made it. Now, at Washington, D.C., the senatorial hearing, third officer Herbert John Pittman testified this. And here's how this went. Mr. Pittman, can you describe the screams as the ship went down? Officer Pittman. He buried his head in his hands and began to sob uncontrollably. After a while, there was a hush all over the audience. Mr. Pittman, sir, we need your information. Tell us, what was it like when the ship went down? Officer Pittman, sir, you ask about the screams, and the best answer to your question is this. Sir, it was just one continuous moan. Unquote. One survivor said... 30 years later, after 1912, that the screams and pleas for mercy sounded like a baseball stadium when a home run is hit. He lived near Detroit. He could go to the Detroit Tiger games. And every time he went to a game, he would have a nightmare that night in case the Tigers did score, you know, a home run. And that's 30 years later. Mm. Now, lastly, the, pr the prudent study of the truth. Now, many, many questions then arise from this historical catastrophe, and that is this. Why didn't the ship, the Californian, come? The mystery ship was the Californian. Had it turned and come to see the fireworks and so on that was going on, the flares, many lives could have been spared. Um, but the Californian had turned off its wireless, and they thought that the ship that was sailing away was just celebrating. They didn't think it was flares of uh, pleas for help. So what about the California? And what about the mystery ship that has never been verified? And why didn't the lifeboats, why didn't they have full capacity? Over 1,100 people could have been spared. Hmm. And, 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 and listen, only 13 were rescued from freezing waters out of 19 boats. Now think about that. Now listen to me. There were hundreds and hundreds of people on the chilly waters in the Atlantic, the North Atlantic, and out of 19 lifeboats, only 13 people were saved. Out of 19 boats. Think about that. Hmm. Millions are dying without a savior and on their way to hell. Now, by the way, do you know how long the people were screaming? Do you remember? How long were people moaning and crying for help? 50 minutes, which is abnormal. I think you're only supposed to live like 30 minutes, maybe 29. But 473 souls were denied seats in lifeboats. And one of the reasons is this. They had this fear that when the Titanic went down, that the swale, the sinking like a, like a whirlpool, would take the lifeboats. And so they wanted to get away from the Titanic. There were a few boats that were ordered by passengers, get back. 
and finally a, a few came and 13 were saved. 13. It's just ridiculous out of 19 boats. You know what I, you know what that reminds me to say then? Many of you preachers and churches out there and you're a Baptist or a Protestant church, you believe the gospel, you believe God is great and you have a, a message to tell, but do you have a soul winning program? I, excuse me. Do you have a soul winning program? Do you go door knocking? Do you do you make personal visits? Do you ever preach on the street? Do you have a bus ministry? What are you doing to save the drowning victims out there that are crying for help? But you don't hear them. You know why? Because you're in your little lifeboat sailing away. This country is going down. And how will we excuse ourselves? How will we do it? How will we excuse? Only, only Light Toller returned. Light Toller was one of the lifeboats. He's the only one that returned. And then, of course, there's John Harper. John Harper was doing everything he could to try to win people to Christ. But that ship sank on the starboard side, hit 1140, and was completely submerged at 220 in early in the morning. Mm. And I'm telling you, now look, there is hope in Christ, but here's what I'm going to say. I'm just going to put myself on paper to say this. I don't know that there's any hope for America. I really don't. I, I think the ship is going down. You call me a pessimist when the boat is going like this, and you call me a pessimist? Let me say this. I'm a realist. Don't you look around and see what's happening? Our churches are a joke. And those of you that are, you see the flares, you hear the sirens, and you're going to act like, well, let's just have our little concerts. Let's have our VBS. Let me tell you, we better get some soul winners out there in the deep waters to try to rescue, because that's where my hope is, is to try to rescue individual precious people, precious Americans. So if there's hope for America, it's one sinner at a time. But how dare you say that somebody like me is too negative when the ship is it's sinking fast? I love America, by the way. So... Just understand this. I love my country. I love this country so much, and so does Jordan. But we we fear and we weep for this country. The homosexual agenda, the abortion epidemic that is destroying this country. The social media, the liberal media is destroying this country. And you preachers that will not teach and preach the Bible and take a flat-footed stand for God's glory and for the good of mankind, you do dirty, rotten, traitor you. Why don't you get out of the ministry and get an honest job? The ship is going to sink, and their only hope is Christ. We've been listening to It's Not Over with Dr. Dan Farrell, and uh, it's not looking too good for America. So what can you do? Well, there's one thing you can do, and that is um, if you if God's given you the means, you've prayed about it, and you've sought the Lord, you can go to morningstarnetwork.org. And get a part of this, be a part of this ministry by giving financially to the to ones who are trying to get out there and do something. We are trying to go across this world, across this nation, preaching truth. And the more support we have, the more people we have backing us, man, the more we can do for the Lord. So we pray that hopefully this will get a hold of the right person. You will share these videos on your Facebook page, and you'll you'll like them on. And, uh, and, and our, on our Facebook page as well, and not to mention subscribing on our YouTube channel. And please, do, do all you can do for the Lord. And if it's not giving to this ministry, then give to some other ministry that's doing something for the Lord, that stands for truth. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you go visit our page, MorningstarNetwork.org. That is where you can help us out through PayPal. Here's Dr. Farrell to close. The lifeboat, I believe could be a New Testament church that preaches the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the only life jacket that's going to help you is the Lord Jesus Christ. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Your only hope in the chilly waters of death is the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Do you know him? And just like John Harper, I say to you, my dear friend, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.